Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Rob, do you have the uh, Game of Thrones uh, theme song by any chance? Do you you mean this? Or... Look at that. Love it when he's prepared. That's oh, a, that, to me, that to me is a great start to the week when he is prepared. I didn't yeah. tell him anything that I wanted in advance. I didn't do my job and let him know. Well, I, I heard wait. this show was on last night. It was on TV. <laughs> I can't wait to talk it, about it because TV. it's just top of mind. And I, I, I come at this not from an opinionated point of view, I come at it from a late to the party, curious about the Game of Thrones. What season did you jump in on? Uh, Forty-three. Okay, no, but you you got it. You were in on it last year, right? Last time. Yeah, I've I've looked at it over the years, but this season I watched every episode. Was it five episodes or something like that? Six, I think. Six. Six. I I I watched every episode. I got into it this season more than I'd for the final season. I thought I'd, I'd track with this, and it's very compelling. And, uh, you know, I was able to kind of uh, critique it like everybody else, and I enjoyed it. But I am very curious because it did generate more buzz than really any television show in recent memory on social media. And then last night, uh, the finale, which uh, I, I was, I, I got done watching, and I have my opinions that I'll share with you, but I also was curious to see what the buzz would be almost as much as I was curious about the show. I jumped on right away, and the initial reaction uh, was well, not split. It was heavily negative. Yeah. Just, just just, quickly, just out of respect to the two people that would wait to watch the finale years later, which is basically two days in this world. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Are you we saying it's a spoiler alert? Warning. 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 The following is a spoiler alert. Specific plot points from a popular movie or television program are about to be discussed by Mike, Rob, and Oscar. Please advance ahead a few minutes on your device or turn the volume down. The spoiler alert begins in three, two, one. <laughs> wait, wait, when is that? Pre- we, I've been sitting on that for three weeks. We haven't spoiled anything in almost a month. Been waiting. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, Jim Amato, I love you. That is fantastic. That's why he is a Hall of Famer. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, So the hatred that came. uh, Oscar, you've been with it longer than anybody on the show. You've been watching that show. All eight seasons. Uh, You you were aware, obviously, of the the venom that was uh, put forward on on social media about uh, Game of Thrones. People were not, a lot of people weren't, weren't happy. Okay. I was one of them. <laughs> oh, displeased! <laughs> I was one All of right. them. Yeah. Okay. And All right. I will list, and, 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 and before I list them, and I'll list them for you, I want to, because I don't want to taint the room. No taint. Please, no taints. That's always been our policy. Mike, you know, if you're, if you're going to do that, I should just give you my simple, I have like a one okay. sentence okay. reason that I think. Please. I think the people that hate it love the, love the previous two episodes. That you mm-hmm. can't see enough heads get chopped off. You can't get enough uh, spears through the eye. You can't get enough throats cut. You can't like the people that love. And and I I saw the red wedding way back when. Yeah. And the red wedding was a spectacular. That wasn't one of yours, was it? It was. A, no, it was not. Thank you, though. Thank yeah. you. It was carnage. And it was. I think they Killed wanted. I think the people that like Game of Thrones want chaos mm. and carnage. Carnage. They didn't want the warm and fuzzy. I personally. Felt fine. I I felt all. I I liked it that the uh, that. We'll see now that here's the real spoiler alert. So turn it down. Uh, I I like the warm and fuzzy that so many people made it through the final episode. There you go. That's May I okay. offer one That's sentence right. before because you, you are the expert and I only oh, watched just for this room. I've watched maybe four episodes of this season and because you guys encouraged me and I wanted to see this finale because yes. it was a big deal. To me, there was a couple surprises, but I found it slow. I mean, plotting. Really slow. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. 
No, because I was probably more invested in the characters. I guess. I mean, the writing is good. The acting is but great. But it was definitely mellow. But it was, mellow. It was mellow chill. is a great it was, word. As yeah. Adam Sandler has said in the past, a medium pace. It was. A medium pace. <laughs> it was. Great salsa. That would be, that'd be generous. Yeah. Yeah. A medium pace. Yeah. And, and and this is why there's a, there's a lot of people that hate it because of the, as you just said, Mike, the happy ending wrapped in a little bow. We know where everybody's going. Sure. The we we are also conditioned to a world of oh my god, um, kick to the nuts, punch to the teeth, season endings as of as of, for multiple multiple different series at the end where you know Breaking Bad and like it's just all these endings that aren't necessarily happy. So when something happy right, comes right. our way, we're like oh this isn't Hollywood. What the hell right. is this? Mm-hmm. Right, right. They want death. They want carnage. They want Tyrion to get a spear through the okay. head as he's stabbing Daenerys. But you can't have a heavy, like, a, with, with a, a playlist. It, let's talk about music. With with heavy bass and a, a lot of drums, mm. and all of a sudden you end on a ballad. And this season was a lot of bass, drums, and then boom. Violence, yes. A love song at the end, mm-hmm. which if you're rolling on this roller coaster, and I would say the... the the idea that Game of Thrones would end with the United Nations being created of Westeros. <laughs> Don't think that's really going to happen. Uh, 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 can I give you my numero uno? Yes. Yeah. This is my number one, and I'll uh, since you watch more of it. All right. I th- And this is the super spoiler alert of uh, All right. spoiler alert. All right. So turn it down. I'm warning you right now. If you didn't watch it last night, I'm sorry. Turn it down because I'm giving the key plot of it. Right. Oscar. Yes. Here's here's the biggest error in the plot. All right. There is no way, there is no way with that dragon losing his mommy that he just grabs the dead body and flies away with uh with Khaleesi. Yeah. There's there's no way he doesn't incinerate. What does he do? He incinerates the throne. The throne. Mm-hmm. Okay. It did that did not make that did not and- make by the way, the best effing CGI money could buy for that dragon sniffing yeah. his dead mom. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like mm-hmm. like an animal would. I almost got teary-eyed because I'm like, oh, no, this is it. This mm-hmm. is it. I'm pretty obsessed with the dragons, yes. to be honest with the you. You think dragons, they, they should get a spinoff? I think the dragons should, should be nominated. But a comedy. But, uh, yeah. But, but speaking of like spinoff, you mentioned- Like the Three Stooges, but without, with, with <laughs> subtitles. You mentioned spinoff, Rob. You mentioned spinoff. I think that the fin- the finale the finale the finale 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 the finale sets the table for a variety of potential. Of course, uh, well, of of them getting back together. They're all alive. Mm-hmm. All of them are alive. There's, Tyrion's alive. Sansa's alive. Yeah, the blonde is alive. John not Snow's alive. alive. <laughs> well, the blonde had to die after yeah. what she did to the town. So, yeah. That you're, Mike, you Such make a great idiots. point. You know what should have happened? The blonde. If we were writing the these books and we were gazillionaires yes. and we had no issues with calorie counts uh, of daily intake, uh, <laughs> it, it would be we would have written a book or a or an iteration of the ending of this series mm-hmm. that that showed Jon Snow being engulfed in flames by the dragon and nothing happening to him. Yeah. And that snow doesn't melt. Thank yeah, you. Jon Snow, in order yeah. for that to be, in order for that to be, they, they didn't like have the a, balls. Like a white they didn't have walker. the balls to kill. They didn't. They didn't have the balls to kill Jon Snow. No, no, no. But I'm saying he would have survived like the White Walkers did. Like, like as a zombie. Yeah. So no, mm-hmm. no. The Walking he, Dead. Yeah. So he would have like the the mother of fire that was uh, like oh, a, made oh, of no. magic. Hold on, I've got it. I've got it. I've <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, he's the rightful heir to the throne. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So he's got that magic in him, right? Yes. And he came back. He came, came back, back from, from the, the dead. dead. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. This would have been the greatest ending in the world. We would have been heroes. Oscar was on the right track. We could write this. Off. I'm so excited with this idea. <laughs> yes. So he is sitting there, and he carries Khaleesi in his arms up after he's killed her. She's mm. gone. She's not mm. coming back. Mm. Right. He's holding it. The dragon is is uh, just uh, consumed with grief. And incinerates Jon Snow on the throne. And guess what? Jon Snow walks out of the flames Whoa. because he is the new king. He survives. He is the father of dragons. Yes. There you go. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes. So oh yes. my God, that would have been a good and ending. And the dragon bows. Yeah. Yes. The dragon yeah. bows. 
The end. That Curtain. would have been. And then he jumps that would have been off. Better he than, says, "Let's go to Wingo." See you, brother. He flies away. <laughs> but what did I do? John Snow, sad sack, goes up to the you know the the the, the Alps or wherever. Goes yeah. up to the you know the the the, the winter place. And by I the way, it's the and, and Blue Ridge meets, Mountains, Mike is where he meets went. the caveman and goes out into the woods. And, and are they banging now? Like what's going on? The two, uh, the redhead, yeah, you know, the guy that does the commercials. Like, hey, I loved you in battle. Let's do yeah. this. I know, I know. And by the way, I didn't like the idea that they're not allowing Jon Snow to father children. Come on, you're not going to let that good looking guy. You can't stop somebody unless they bang. did, you know, the, what they did to that one guy. Also, yep. well, and if you're not a Game of Thrones fan and you're not understand, I hope you understand our passion and our love for this show. No, and excuse me, the world is talking about this, okay. and I understand why. I, the so, world. What about this? This is where we could have made a mint. Yeah. Is Jon Snow, and I'm not trying to one up you, Mike. Because I think you took my premise and made you, it better. Your premise. And made it, it was and You own it. Made it better. Absolutely. Um, where Jon Snow is still holding uh, Danny, the dragon, the mother of dragons. Mm-hmm. Mother of dragons. Yeah. And then, so the dragon is so incensed. Daenerys. Dana- so incensed. He burns them both. Danny dies because she wasn't the true heir. And Jon Snow stands. Mm-hmm. And then that's when he realized, the dragon realizes, oh, you're still my papa. And then yeah, bounce. but let me tell you for for the nerd nicks that the knife through the heart of Danny yes is Danny. is what kills her. Okay, she could have probably survived the fire. Yes, but yeah. but but true but if true he true walks out, she walked but if out he of walks, fire. That is, he walk, yeah, you know what? I should have left it where you left it on the throne. But I on think the the, no I bad think ideas. That would have that would have <laughs> been a twelve. I agree. That they gotta be well. smart enough to come up with that. I can't believe we they, just did it sitting they here changed, on a podcast. They should have changed the ending of the book to All do right, that. Uh, for Rob, TV. Rob, you are labeling the show the better ending. Oscar and Mike write the better ending. Yes, because <laughs> this is a twelve. Yes. this is a twelve. If this had been the ending, and at the very end, at the he very walks end, out, he flies at the away very with end, the dragon. And, uh, yeah, he 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 walks out of the fire. The, 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 the dragon, the dragon as Oscar says, the dragon bows. He gets on the dragon. He flies off. Yes. yes. And, and, uh, but really, and I the, think the, the key thing, the dramatic moment, is the dragon bowing to him. That's yes. huge. Because right. not only is that a great symbolic gesture, that's really using the CGI for oh, good. Oh, visually, yeah. you'd be like, whoa, mm, whoa. Bowing Hi. dragon. Wait, hold on. I got another twist. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So, so, in order to button it all up, all right. Uh-huh. He doesn't fly away. He doesn't yes. fly away. Listen to this. Okay. This is what happened. Oh, this is great. Okay. So the guy, uh, the bald guy without the balls, the guy, the eunuch. That died. Uh, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's the, uh, the unwashed or whatever. Yeah, they, yeah. Uh, no, you're unsullied. They, no, gray worm. For the a second, unsullied. I thought gray, you were un- describing me. Gray. <laughs> gray worm. <laughs> the guy with the, the bald guy that she made yes. the, the, the leader of her forces. Yes. Mm-hmm. He comes in after he murders Daenerys. So there is a witness. He comes in with he a couple of his it. guys. He has right? to see it. Yeah, he yeah. has to see yeah, it all happen. It, yeah. And as soon as he sees it happen, he knows he it's game over. He's like, game over. And then he says, yeah. free Tyrion. Yes. And and everybody. And, and that's it. And that's how it ends. There you that's go. That's how it ends. Yeah. That buttons it up. There's no trip up to the Great White North. No, 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 no. He's but, ex- but also, but, but also uh, Sansa does uh, maintain the independence of the North. Yeah. Uh, she does not yield to Jon Snow, no. and she so that sets up the potential for a future. You know, they're them against us yes. thing. Oh boy, or oh, them boy. getting married because right. they're not brother and sister. Yes, Which and that then, would be uh, some some fantasy fiction. I think that we'll find somewhere else. And then Tyrion says, "I am going on a long trip to the south, where I will enjoy palm trees and beautiful women, and I will drink my ties, and I will." And the kid in the wheelchair yeah. becomes the hand. The yes. kid in the wheelchair becomes the prime counselor because he's seeing you in the place you've always wanted to yeah. be. I, I, the three-eyed listen, raven. If we don't, and and by the way. If we if somebody's come up with this or somebody's given it, <laughs> which is going to be out there because a lot of thousand people, I think this is I have great. Not this read is not, this. This I did not expect this no. coming into the show today, but that is exactly Brilliant. what I happens. Jon Snow, the true father of dragons, he has the same powers. Yes, yes that that Daenerys has, uh, and, and this just has to know. This it. is going to be blasphemous, but when when Barry, which is not ne- it's maybe one tenth the show of Game of Thrones on the radar of the world, the Bill Hader show. Yes, yes. yes. that was that, that was a crappy finale okay, too. But in my this, opinion. It, but that <laughs> well, kind of, they kind of set be. them up. That, but that's coming back. That's coming back next year. Yeah, right? but so, that I mean, season finale 
Not series, season finale. Yes. What's better than the series finale for Game of Thrones, in my opinion? Mm-hmm. Well, I see now there's another one where I was late to the party. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I didn't I didn't understand the whole scene on the stage. I didn't know whether it was that a real fight they were having on the stage. Is no, that what it was? no, no. She, she uh, you have, you'd have to watch. You'd have she to watch. She melted down. Yeah, she, she melted, melted down. down. And she's okay. the. She's the worst on the show. I like show. the bald guy. I like the bald serial killer, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. the bar, the mafia, the Russian. Oh, North dude. Hollywood Russian uh, guy? He's yeah, great. He's my favorite. Russian guy is, <laughs> Hello, Barry! <laughs> and and I, I, you know what? And, and I have to get a, uh, I have to get an impression of that other guy. Yes, you know, yes. Uh, whatever <laughs> Fuchs, his name is. Fuchs. Uh, Fuchs, 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 yeah. Fuchs, Fuchs, Fuchs. Stephen Root Fuchs, is his yeah, name. Yeah. Stephen Root. Uh, yeah. Love. Yeah, everybody get together, Jim. Anyway, lots of television. Are and we then, done spoiling uh, now? No, wait, 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 wait. Because I have just, a closing element. Let me add this. Yes. <laughs> Isn't Brandon the Broken a bad name for a king? Yes. Yes. Now you're selling me on, I, you know, this has been informative. We've created a better ending. Yes. yes. And by that, Bran. Bran, right? What's his name? Brandon. 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 I think it's, it's, it's Bran. a terrible name. It's I not think it's, John Snow. I think it's Bran, like the cereal. B-R-A-N. Well, I, I the, you know, making him the king was a little silly. I well, he's a great, soft. Mike. He's now, now I'm with the people that hated it. He's my favorite sitting leader. Okay. It's, yeah, so Our it's, ending. It's, I hope we get... It's Bran the Broken. You're right. Right. Now, Bran the Broken. What I felt at that point is they had jumped the shark because while I think our society today is inclusive and it's open and it should be that way and no one should ever look at disabilities in any negative manner. You think they were going for that? Is that what they were going for? In Westeros, they're not playing that game. That tune is not on the radio. No, no. (laughs) That tune is – they don't even have radio. They don't even have radio. Goodness. Uh, You know what? I think our – you know, he was – all right. Tyrion gets a, uh, you know, the, the the she we we determine that Daenerys is evil. Right? She yes. sends uh, Tyrion to the uh, to to the quarters. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they didn't execute him right away. Which which is what they did with uh, Veros, Veros or the bald guy, yeah, the bald eunuch. Yeah, they mm-hmm. they execute him within five minutes. Uh, Tyrion gets to spend uh, you know six nights in jail. Uh, so he's sitting there, and then he has the meeting and says, "You must." Uh, you know, Tyrion tells Jon Snow. You must do this. You must yeah. fulfill your destiny. But then he says, "My queen, perfect scene with the with the yeah. knife through the heart. Mm-hmm. You keep all of that." Dragon comes in and goes, looks at this, and then doesn't have to be on the throne, Oscar. You don't even have to worry about the throne. Yeah, you know, you can do that. It, you know, it, the throne but, is, but it's otherwise. visually stunning. It, it was. It, but they, they love the melt, melting of the throne. They yeah. like that. But then the dragon burns Jon Snow up, and he walks out of the flames as the true. King, yeah. magic king. Mm-hmm. It's witnessed by bald yeah. guy. Yeah. The, the, the Grey trooper. Worm, he, unsullied, yeah, not a great, liar. Yep, Grey Worm says, uh, the, the troops are yours, everything, yeah. we all come together. Yeah. He is the master of the universe, and and then he doesn't leave. And uh, they, they go on. That's how it happened. That's he walks how it out, happen. he yeah. sees his entire family. He tells Sansa, keep the north. Uh, Arya, uh, take a shower. And then he moves on with life. <laughs> if we are. If we are the only ones, if we happen to be, if this idea born out of the brain of Oscar and the brain of Mike, mm-hmm. if this is what happens, uh, this could be it, boys. This could be. This, this could be our out? ticket. The one this could podcast be our ticket. that broke yes. out. Pony. The one podcast. The <laughs> podcast. The Mike O'Mara, show that broke out. Mike O'Mara's show writes the perfect ending. Yes. This has got to be a press release today. <laughs> Mike O'Mara's show writes the perfect ending. Agreed. We can't have a. Agreed. We can't have an internet connection. No. But we can do. We can do a lot of other stuff. Great we radio. Yes. 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 That's Pony, it. type right. it up. Mail it to ourselves in a sealed envelope and hold up a picture of today's newspaper so we can timestamp it. <laughs> we did it. We yes. did it. All right, now you can play your own. Okay, thank you. Yes, play your own. The preceding has been a spoiler alert. We now rejoin the Mike O'Mara show already in progress. <laughs> I never shortchange myself when it comes to the potential for a viral uh, statement or a viral segment of the show. Jon Snow gets burned up by the dragon, walks out of the flames. He is the father of dragons. Yeah, father and, of dragons. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, that was his evil sister who, you know, couldn't control her temper. Mm-hmm. And that's why she got a knife in the yeah. heart. That's yeah. it. That's what it is. And you roll and, uh, on. Can Move you on. see me okay, by the way? It's hard. Oh, yeah. Today. Well, we can hear you perfectly, Mike. Yes. But can Absolutely you see perfectly. Me? Yes, can we can see, see we can see you as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Very good. Uh, then I guess that means, uh, you know, we uh, not only have to fly to Hollywood and uh, <laughs> an audition uh, for the writing staff of the next big HBO hit. Uh, but I don't think I could write Gentleman Jack, though. My my new favorite show. You know, I just uh, 
I have to be more in tune with the uh, ladies that are in She the is a very proactive lady, that lady on that show. Yeah, she gets things the done. the diaries of Ann Lister. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very good. Well, TV. We could talk about TV because we're idiots like the rest of the country. Start the show. We're all <laughs> sick. It's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. <clears throat> Sir Braun of the Blackwater, Lord of High God, Lord Paramount of the Reach, and Master of Coin. Would you say the Crown's debt to you has been paid? In full, my lord hand. Good. Time to start incurring a new one. We have hungry people to feed. Can we expect some assistance in this regard? Indeed we can. Lord Davos, we have an armada to rebuild and ports to repair. We have. These projects will begin as soon as the Master of Coin and Lord of Lofty Titles provides funding. The Master of Coin looks forward to helping the Master of Ships, but first he has to ensure we're not wasting coin, or soon there won't be no more coin. Anymore. You master a grammar now, too. Grand Maester, <clears throat> it is my theory, based on my years of work on the costly rock sewers, that clean water leads to a healthier population. The Archmaester has done some research on this subject, and it turns out... The strong live and the weak don't. Find the best builders and set them to the task. Well, speaking of builders, all the best brothels burn down. The Master of Coin is willing to fund reconstruction. Uh, the Archmaester is less than enthusiastic about the salutary effects of brothels. Well, I imagine he isn't using them properly. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. We are live from the Podcast Village Studios in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. TMOS to our friends. If you're new, welcome. Feel coming if you've uh, been with us the whole time. We love you. Thank you for your continued support, and we're glad we are in entertaining you, ladies and gentlemen. From uh, Letter Kenny Ireland to uh. Steubenville, Ohio, from Solon, Iowa to Marshall, Missouri, from Hawthorne, California to Athens, Greece, the Mike O'Mara Show is on now and brought to you by Free Fly. When you're running around outside and you feel like you're going to... No. No, that's not uh, it. I'm sorry. When you're running around outside, the last thing you want to do is be in uncomfortable clothing that weighs you down. That's why you need Free Fly. Free Fly is designed for outdoorsmen and women who won't settle for uncomfortable clothing. I was in my uh, Free Fly shorts all weekend long. Loved them. Butter soft bamboo fabric designed for perfect comfort. Honestly, it's like wearing nothing. And my neighbors say, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. Perfect tops and bottoms for any outdoor activity. And Free Fly's bamboo fabric has natural UPF sun protection to keep you cool on and off the water. Free Fly is beautiful in its simplicity with no bells and whistles, just great clothes. It's time to stop being uncomfortable. And we uh, have to start wearing Free Fly's bamboo clothing. It's wonderful for you. Father's Day is just around the corner. So gear up for dad. Plus... Save room for debt now. <laughs> Plus, you can get 20% off when you visit FreeFlyApparel.com and use promo code TMOS. That's FreeFlyApparel.com and the promo code TMOS. I would like to have something out there just in case. Just in case, because I cannot poo-poo that wonderful idea that we had. I think that 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 is a... That would have been that would have been a ten. That would have gotten amazing. Something that has that kind of run. It's up. easy to money morning Brin. quarterback this mm -hmm. because they, they wrote the show. I imagine even the writers at the end they're trying to be true to the book. We don't know the book, Mike. So because we can't read, well, <laughs> we just <laughs> not willing to put in the time. I I believe that those who read the book, while some people want the season recast, understand why this is all coming together. Those yeah. who those who didn't wanted a Hollywood ending, right? right. And I I just I know the TV, and uh, I also know that uh, the people that really get upset about this. Uh, and I look, I understand people getting upset about their art and their content. I understand that, but as far as the Magic Box, when you're talking about complete fantasy, it's much like when we discussed last week uh, comic book movies. Yes, you know, it's a uh, it's just. It's fantasy. It's not real. And it, it, look, I don't want to lay a bombshell on this show right now, but 
you know, when last I checked, we are uh, we are flirting with potential of real war, okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Real war of flames and stuff like that. But around this country, I guarantee you 50%, maybe more than that, of the people that are all up in arms about Game of Thrones probably don't realize that we're, uh, you know, we're staring at Iran right now kind of in a situation that could be really horrible. And I read a lot about it over the weekend, and so I just, I, I worry about us sometimes because I don't think Americans realize you know they look at their shows everything's on that magic box if it's not on the magic box they don't get it so i get a little scared even when i was watching the fire and brimstone of game of thrones i was saying you know when you see the charred bodies in uh king's landing you know you could see charred bodies in real life and it wouldn't be fun and uh so i worry about stuff like that because i'm always thinking never off Never off. But no back off to the brilliant solution for the ending of Game of Thrones. Yes. Do you think George R. R. Martin is going to see this and spit out his custard and say, damn it, this <laughs> is what way, we should have done? George R. R. Martin is the book author, right? Yes. Or, or mm-hmm. is yes. he? Why do they always say DB? I don't know. I don't know if enough about it. Now we're getting in too much of the weeds. All right, then let's brain, pull back. Pull back. My brain is starting to, to hurt on uh, Game of Thrones a little bit. But it's fine. It's a television show. Mm-hmm. Now I urge everybody to go on and move on to my next pick to click. Getting very, very uh, great reviews, by the way, uh, produced by the BBC and HBO. And that, of course, is the uh, story of Ann Lister, the lesbian. The very, uh, they're saying the first, very first modern lesbian in the 1830s. Uh, and it is a, that show. That would is, be her Game a, of Thrones is name, club. isn't it? Like Lister, the lesbian? Uh, li- well, she's Gentleman Jack. Yeah. That's her, that's her, that's her <laughs> yeah. nickname. And she is spectacular. She's spectacular. You can't do what she's, you, you cannot have a show like that. With that delicate a subject, and it's still delicate in sure. this day and age, without having the brilliant acting ability and the way to communicate a lifestyle that uh, some people might not be aware of and uh, what it would be like, and she does a great job. So I am telling people, screaming from the highest mountain, and by the way, I don't know how they promote with HBO and all this stuff, but I'm certainly not seeing enough of of her, especially when they're going into the next season. So I don't know whether they haven't re-upped it or what they're but it's a 2019 show well now produced with, on the bbc now with barry out of the way they can put all their focus on gentleman jim mm, well yeah uh, have you looked in have i've you watched seen the first yet? episode yes okay and, so you yeah it gets it, it really starts humming about episode three i mean so, but i can so, see yeah. where it's where it's headed and i love the look of it and the, uh, the right. acting is great i mean it's it looks like it's it's got that HBO thing where every episode looks like a major motion picture. Yes. It just looks great. So Well, I, I hope everybody... Unbelievable, uh, but I'm sure it's a good show. I hope. Now, no, it's not uh, believable the, like Game of Thrones. Oh, well, you know. Well, when did the dragons I, come in? I got you a very... You mock because yeah. you don't understand. I, I always have mocked what I don't understand. Well, you like old. You like, you like the past. You should and love you, this. You, it's based in the past. Yeah, but not that far in the past. What, what are you talking about? It's what? before we had old timey movies. I, no, Game of Thrones is it's too old. Medieval times. That's too old. That's well, too old. Well, Game of Thrones is an old. Game of Thrones is complete fantasy. Yeah, but don't you get the impression that it's like it's like the Middle Ages? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. That's too long ago. Yeah, but there is no time frame for Game. You're right. Of Thrones, no, you're right. right. True enough. It's a complete I figure, fantasy. I figure it's uh, it's it's when one of the pieces of Pangea broke off, and that was Westeros. <laughs> Okay. As far as uh, my show, Gentleman Jack, that's 1830. Yeah, yeah and I, I like that. that. You, I like that. If you want to, if you want to dive into that one, let me share with you. Uh, uh, do we have time to do this now? Can I do this and talk about the Preakness here for a second? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we because, have time. Uh, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me share with you. <laughs> I'm out to dinner. I'm oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you at supper. Uh, no, it's coming from dinner. I was okay. Coming, or I, I, I was either going in or coming out. I get a text. I got a text from Rob Spiewak, all right? Saturday, 6.45 p.m. <laughs> Rob writes to me, boy, isn't Pimlico gorgeous? <laughs> he writes, they might as well run the preakness in my ass. Baltimore, hon. I, now, now that, that was a... Oh, my God. I am tell, I'm telling you that previously I had seen... Uh, a television report on the Preakness and how it's running down, and it, it's I didn't going know that. I didn't know that, that it was in bad shape. But it's just it's always troubled me, especially yeah. it's only two weeks after the pomp and the uh. grandeur of one of the greatest 
televised sporting it's, events there it's is. It's the trashiest of the Triple Crown. Oh, well, <laughs> by far. The, the Kentucky Derby is just such a wonderful thing to look at and behold. And then you've got, like, you know, like what, Third Eye Blind playing in the, in the, in the infield? I've been to many a Preakness. It I've, is trash. I went to one Preakness, and I my takeaway is that I said we must go now because this is no fun. And as we were leaving, going now, what was Now, you like a good party. What I do. Was, what was not fun about it? It was hot. It was disorganized. There was a lot of screaming, a lot of bumping, and uh, a mm. lot of shirtless people. And as we were leaving under the tunnel that goes under the uh, – to get to the infield, you have to go the under tunnel, the tunnel. Uh, otherwise known uh, in racing circles as the tunnel of puke. Well, that was there was a gentleman returning a lot of Miller Lite as I was yeah. leaving. And I, <laughs> and I believe my quote was, aha, the sport right. of kings. It yes, was yeah. – it's horrible. And it, they couldn't even make it – visually nice on television so, they get so to that's choose what all the motivated shots. your text to me tell me about what you saw on tv it just, that motivated that text well pimlico is an ugly structure it was ugly when <laughs> it was built and it's ugly now and the colors look like very 25 years ago the infield looked a weird combination mm. of crowded disorganization but undersold it wasn't as crowded as it normally was okay and then it's all just right. they go to the show you know when you go to the derby and you look and you see the men in their white suits and the women yeah. in their beautiful hats what you see in the when they go to the grandstands in pimlico a lot of tube tops there's a lot of tube tops <laughs> happening there and it's just it's not it's not the derby and i get it it always pisses me off because i love watching the kentucky derby and then right. two weeks later it's like we're gonna do it again and you turn it on and it's like Oh no! This uh, isn't yeah. this isn't down okay. there. Nasty, <laughs> but nasty. There's there's the, look. I agree with you. It's trashy. It is. But y your reasons for hating it were all the reasons a, a, a young man in his twenties should love it. I suppose is is it a young environment? Is well, it a young it's a young fit there? environment. Is what it is. Right. Okay. And young and fit was probably never part of Rob's equation, so he did not feel like he involved. He was involved. I'm or not accepted. sure anyone ever needed to bring up physical fitness. <laughs> you in my said analysis. it yourself. You said shirtless people, I shirtless guys. I had nothing to say about the fact that they were fat or skinny. Oh, well, there were just no shirts. <laughs> <laughs> that goes for girls too. They're wearing bikini tops. Yeah, and They're sometimes, sometimes not even that. <laughs> hey, you know what? When I hear no shirts, though, I think of cops. Yeah, I think of the TV show Cops, where the guys that, that is there don't a have NASCAR shirts element to it? Yes. Oh, it's and a I don't NASCAR want. At times. And I have my, I, the other favorite element of when I went to the Preakness is that when you get about two and a half miles outside of Pimlico, it's almost like watching the billboards for uh, South of the Border because everyone's in their front yard with a cardboard sign that's parking. Like, you can park in my yard for twenty dollars. <laughs> Come on, you park right here for twenty dollars. <laughs> so it's a it's nasty looking. Yeah, it's it's, horrible. it's nasty. It's a bad I think a young Mike O'Mara would have enjoyed it. I, I, a young Rob did not, not shocking. I did not. I, I loved it you. until uh, I was about 30. And there was no betting in the infield either. I wanted to place a bet and there you was no boys, betting in the infield. You boys remember when I uh, took you on the tour of my former residence at the Willow Lake Apartments where yes. I had my phone stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I lived at the Willow Lake Apartments, I had a party uh, at my house that was not related to the Preakness, but a about 15 people came from the Preakness with their jester hats and uh, and came to my home. Chuck Dickman, my program director, uh, came to my home, my apartment, uh, for a little soiree after the pre. That's as close as I ever got. I never got up there uh, to see it. I always thought, hey, it's you know, it's one leg of the triple crown. It's got to be kind of special. But you're saying not, uh, not. And by the way, didn't a horse die there this weekend too? Uh, like the day before, a horse went down at Pimlico. Oh, I don't. And, uh, I didn't hear that. Passed I think away. that happens every week. No. <laughs> No, it doesn't happen. No, that's every just on that week, HBO show where they were losing Didn't all the horses. Didn't Pimlico have like a, a horse herpes outbreak that they had to like quarantine no, this everybody? Was, this was not a horse, horse herpes. herpes. <laughs> I will be positive that happened. This was. Let me. Like, this what way, happens in the share, stall uh, stays in the out. stall. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, all horse right. herpes. I, uh, Pimlico. Uh, <laughs> Google. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, let me see here. Three-year-old Philly. Uh, congrats, gal, collapses and dies after the Miss Preakness stakes. Oh, I, I didn't that hear was, that. Uh, mm. Yeah, that, that was uh, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. It could yeah, happen to any horse race. And two, okay, <laughs> mind you, Mike? this is 2006. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pumico horses quarantined for equine herpes. It's a <laughs> oh, he's right. <laughs> there you go. This, let me read you the article I'm reading. It's been a tough start to the year equine. for horse racing. Uh, perhaps the worst development yet happened on Friday when a filly named Congrats Gal died on the track at Pimlico Racecourse. Just a day before the second leg of the Triple Crown, held at the same track, uh, they hold they uh, hosted the eight-horse 
missed Preakness Stakes. According to AP, the three-year-old filly uh, faltered in the upper stretch of the race and had to be eased to the finish line for an eighth-place finish, and uh, the, the horse collapsed after the race and was quickly attended to by medical staff and taken off the track by an ambulance. I can only but, imagine so the uh, upper management at, at Pimlico on Friday saying, you know, this isn't going to look good. <laughs> Found another <laughs> another headline. I knew this was this is wasn't in 2006. I don't pull that from 2006. Right, right. You got herpes. Equi- you got the herpes. Equine herpes virus in Maryland. It says in uh, Annapolis, Maryland. Dateline March 8th, uh, 2018. Yeah, it's my birthday. Uh, test results on the two ho- horses isolated in in a detention barn in Pimlico for the two horses came up positive for equine herpes. It they were, is they a were making nasty out. Nasty looking place. The horses it is were a nasty looking place. <laughs> it's not All not right. a classy <laughs> joint. <laughs> From the Washington Post, ladies and gentlemen, the yes. dire need of repair and renovation at the 149 year old Pimlico Racecourse was clear as Preakness Day got underway on Saturday. On Thursday, two days before the race, a wa- <laughs> a water main broke yeah. in front of the oh. complex. Oh no! <laughs> Whether the repairs were inadequate or additional pipes burst on Saturday is unclear, but water pressure was so negligible on the fourth floor of the grandstand that those rest those restrooms were closed in the hours leading up to the Preakness. Oh, a good time to close them, too. No. And li- lines for restrooms on lower floors were unusually long as the sunny afternoon of pre-race partying unfolded. Asked Saturday afternoon about the myriad of ways in which the facility seemed to be falling apart, Tim Ritfo, chief operating officer for racing and games for the Stronach Group, which owns Pimlico, said, it gets tough for every year to give the experience the customer deserves for an event like this. A <laughs> pipe broke about two days before the race out front. We had one break two years ago. We go in and repair it, and I guess, well, they're telling me the engineers, the pressure and everything takes so much time to build up clogged it's just old infrastructure we do everything we can to help keep up the level we can there you go so you're it's a shame mike it's just a shame we didn't see pimlico when it was shiny and new in the 1850s (laughs) right right exactly by the way it's it only needs 250 million dollars worth of improvement well you know a couple good yeah. rounds of track. We got that much money. <laughs> Come on. That's it. So who won? Do we know who won? I don't even know. Uh, yes. Even it was, here's the race in 30 seconds. They're off. In the Preakness and the Maiden Bodie Express lost the jockey at the start. Unseated John Velasquez right out of the gate. And they're I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, the <laughs> but it's Warren Got to go to the bathroom. Down to the 16th pole in front. In front by two lengths late. A late charge from Longshot Everfast to the inside two. War of Will. In, in nice hi- name. In hindsight, we should, not we, someone online yes. should have made that same uh, horse race with all the Game of Thrones characters mm-hmm. and Bran mm-hmm. the Broken wins. Bran the Broken. Oh, by the way, War, War of Will, War of Will is also the name I give myself when I go to a Krispy Kreme donut shop. That's what I do. <laughs> War of Will. <laughs> and my War last thought on the Preakness, Mike, you couldn't yes. pay me enough to blow that bugle after that bugler blew it. But yes. with, with all the herpes running around up there. Yeah, horse herpes. Horse herpes. Man, the oh worst. Man. That's terrible. I, I, it's very scary. But, uh, well, I don't know which is more exciting, the uh, Preakness or or Got, <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> we'll take a break. Come back with more fun right here on the bike. I'll be on the show, it's Political Persuasions. Hey, it's Chris Rates with Political Persuasions. This week, Mike and I talk about the abortion ban in Alabama. What does it mean for reproductive rights? Plus, how dangerous is the standoff with Iran? And that Democratic field, it just keeps getting bigger. We're going to help you think about it all this week. You can download Political Persuasions at politicalpersuasions.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever fine podcasts are found. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Hello, friends. This is Bode Express. Bode Express. Bode Express. What is Bode Express? It's the horse that threw his jockey at the Preakness. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. This is Bode Express. Hello. (laughs) You want me to do a horse? Yeah, please. Hello, friends. This is Bode Express. Perhaps you remember me as the number nine horse from the past Saturday's Preakness Stakes. <laughs> a lot of people have been coming up and asking me, Hey, Bodie Express, 
Why do you throw Jockey John Velasquez and then start running the track like crazy? Well, the answer is clear. I needed to renew my Mike O'Mara Show bonus subscription, and there was no time to mess around. So I pooped on the track through my jockey and got going. Uh, I knew there was free Wi-Fi in the clubhouse, even though there wasn't water pressure, and that's where I was headed. I had to throw my jockey because he's more of an all-things-considered guy, and ain't nobody got time for that. He was just slowing me down. This is Bodie Express, a horse from the Preakness. <laughs> you see, the Mike O'Mara bonus show is the sixth episode of... I can't do it anymore. Right. Buy the bonus yeah. show. Buy it. Buy the bonus show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you you, you didn't even see the highlight? Is that when the, uh, when the race started, number nine actually reared up and threw the jockey? And so no. the jockey landed on his ass right in front of the, the starting line. And then the horse... That's no, at the pewter mug. And the horse ran the race without a jockey. <laughs> Yeah, I, I missed all of it. It was I mean, great. I didn't even watch it on TV. I was uh, I was busy uh, at the Pewter Mug, my new favorite joint. The Pewter Mug, uh, is that the name of it or a drink you had? The, or mo- most uh, No, the Pewter Mug was the restaurant with I the see. most delicious uh, roasted chicken. Uh, oh. You will or the most delicious. Uh, you know, it's not just Paulie Christine that uh, that enjoys food. Right. Uh, you know, your, your boy uh, went out there and this stuff was so great and it was wonderful and it was uh, delicious. The Pewter the Mug problem, sounds like it might be like an English pub. Does it have like an English pub feel? No, it's kind of it's just it's the name of the place. It's been right. around for a long, long time. And uh, the only problem at this joint they have is that you go, uh, you walk into the joint, you go to the right, and then you come behind the bar and uh, they're known for prime rib and they're mm. known for having a uh, all you can eat salad bar that's kind of a throwback to the old days yeah. of a restaurant like beef and steak it's charlie's <clears throat> it's got yeah that went out of business because they were too damn generous that's right and and so the salad bar is very nice and they have great homemade soups there too so you can really you know get a small entree and and go to the salad bar the whole tray and, uh, and, <laughs> and enjoy it up the only problem with uh with this particular restaurant and it is a problem is that when you go past the bar, there is a dining area on a lower level, and then four inches on a riser is a row of other tables. Now, apparently, the last restaurant was a seafood place, and they built it up with concrete. And I, I got to the detail of this later by talking to the owner, mm-hmm. including rebar that uh, that rises up maybe four or five inches. So the problem is these tables sit on this platform. And uh, the first time I went to this joint, uh, it was it was actually, uh, it, it, you know, I took a little bit of a trip uh, going up. And they always say, watch your step. Sure. And apparently this riser has been uh, resulted in carnage for oh, no. uh, elderly people. Oh, no. <laughs> right, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop, guys. I can't do it. I can't. It's just uh, the, connection. The, the video is so horrible. Okay. I, I don't Hold know on. what's going on. Let's pause for just yeah, a second, yeah. okay? Let me know when we're clear. Waiting. You know what? And it, so it, I hope I'm describing it accurately when I say when you go to this thing, it runs along about a six table row. Okay. And it's got a little uh it's got a little bit of a lip there. And let me tell you something. Uh we had such a great experience that I called a manager over and told him how much I liked uh, this uh, this server we had, this young lady that was doing such a nice job. And and I like to spotlight that as well as, you know, complaining if something's bad. You want to tell them when something's yeah, really good. positive energy just is good. so sweet and so upbeat and did such a nice job. And I started chatting with the owner, and he was talking about the uh, this place uh, and this lip that they, they have a new restaurant. They remodeled it, but they had this one little problem with this riser, he said he's going to put in booths. The reason I bring this up is that in back of us, another senior citizen came rolling into this restaurant, and he took a header. Uh, oh, you know, oh, during no. during your meal? During uh, right before we had our, our oh, meal, he took a header. That's then not I'm, that's so that's so unsettling. So it's just like, oh, I've been looking forward to this. I think I'm going to have the uh, oh Jesus! Oh. oh no! Oh my God! Help me! Help me! And. The guy tells me That's that jarring. I said, well, "How's it going?" He said, "He said in the last month, he uh, he has had a man <laughs> fall and hit his head. Oh. Uh, he has had a man fall and break his hip in three places. Oh, and a lady fall and break her wrist." 
<laughs> Are any of these I, litigious people? Uh, he is being sued by the hip guy, and he is not. Oh, my uh, the God. The lady likes the restaurant so much that the, uh, the wrist breaker <laughs> said no problem at all. I think at some point you do put the yellow tape up. It is well, something. to the point. It is to the point where at this joint <laughs> that I'm sitting there eating my little chicken, and I look and this. You know, when you see the guys kind of shuffling in, yes. God, I hope they told him. I hope they told him. And you get the veterans that have been in there, and I'm not talking veterans of foreign wars. I'm talking about veterans of the restaurant. Veterans of the mug, there, Mike. And they they know the mug. They know their way at the at the mug. And uh, uh, by the way, the the, uh, the the soup was fantastic. The vegetable soup, so, absolutely delicious. But there's no, I mean, after three injuries and a fourth that you witnessed, they've not even put down yellow tape. Yeah, it's it, they. I guess are working on it. But Build a uh, ramp. Do I mean, I, something. I would think if you got sued, you might uh, be uh, dealing with. It. And so I'm. I'm. By the way, I'm raving to this manager right. owner about his uh, service and his food. I'm telling him how we're regulars that we're going to be regulars because we like it. And the guy says, "Yeah, a guy broke his hip in three places," and uh, says, uh, "And he's he's suing me." And Carla, you know, does it, Miss Honesty one on one? You know, she goes. I'd sue you too. Uh, you know, so it was kind you of. You know, you have a problem. You it continue yes. to be there. Yeah, it was, let yeah. it be there. It, it was. Yeah, but boy, that chicken man, brind. They brind the roast it's, chicken. Let's brine. Huge. You soak brine it in salt the, water before you the, roast you, it. You you soak it so it's ultra moist and. Uh, you know, it's not like Paulie Christine, who went to a Greek restaurant and post, uh, posted all of his food that was fantastic. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paulie. I put that up there. Uh, I can almost. Ma- I am so into. Do you Paulie think? Christine's do you think Paul pictures. would see this stuff? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> uh, but he's he's a younger man. I mean, he's vital. Uh, but the, you know, he showed me the moussaka, the rice pudding, mm. the uh, the beans that they got. The uh, this man. If this was just him and his wife going yeah. out to dinner, this man eats. And his comment was, "I wrote it down. I liked it so much." He said, "Polly can Polly Christine can go to a restaurant and eat like he's going to the electric chair." <laughs> <laughs> the man loves to, and you know, Polly, I'm here to tell you, keep posting the pictures yes. because they're that good. They're that fantastic. I love it, love it, love it. And uh, yeah, our little place, yeah, outside of the people falling, but it is really, if you look at it the right way, it's kind of entertainment. So it's almost dinner theater. <laughs> It's yeah, jarring. It's like, if yeah. you see someone gets hurt, I hate that. there's a scene called yep. EMS, can right. I help? And then you're like, this food's going to get cold if I leave my seat. Yeah, he spilled That's your soup. A, uh, that man appears to be uh, 84 years old. He's uh, making his way over there right now. And, uh, oh, dear. <laughs> He's oh. caught his leg. Oh, no. He's <laughs> caught his leg, and it's going down there. Oh, no. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Bites the dust. Better as call he, uh, soul. As he uh, hits there. But uh, it's great down here in South Florida. Everybody's gone. So, I mean, yeah. Hi. In fact, well, I never did. A lot of them are in the hospital with broken hips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but how about that lady with the broken wrist, right? That's the lady nice. with the broken yeah. wrist who You, don't, uh, you can eat soup to. with a cast. And by the way, if you like your beef, too, your prime rib there, mm. uh, and reasonable. You know, it's somewhere between... Uh, it's it's not a, it's not as uh, moderate as Outback. And it's not like a high dollar. I'm joint. thinking like I'm picturing like in the day steak and ale. It yeah, it's got that, and it's got that kind of old. Now the old place they had, they're they're building. They moved from a freestanding building to a strip mall, uh-huh. and the freestanding building was you walked in there, and if there wasn't food and tablecloths, you would think that you were in a funeral parlor. I am not exaggerating. <laughs> The new joint has a has a bit of a nice vibe to it. The old place was like the salad bar looked like people that were uh, waiting to not not get the uh, romaine lettuce. They were waiting to shake hands with St. Peter. I'm not kidding you. I love that's that funeral home like. vibe. I think that's nice. <laughs> Makes me yeah. hungry. They moved They moved out of there. We'll take a break, and uh, we will come back with more fun. And uh, I want to tell you about a new phenom on the sports front that uh, I think this guy's going to be a, a household name. I mean that sincerely. We'll take a break, come back with more on the Mike O'Mara Show. I can see you now. Yay. Okay, very good. All right. Rob and Joe here. Uh, Joe, me and the girlfriend getting a little kinky trying to spice things up in the bedroom. Are you going to have a safe word? How does that work? You know, if things go too far, you... Well, let me give you an example. We'll okay. role play. I'll, yeah, be sure. the, uh, I'll be your girlfriend. Ooh, fun. All right, how about, uh, how about well, I tie you up? Go on. How about uh, maybe a little candle wax? Ooh, I like that. 
All right. How about introducing some food? How about some uh, strawberries? Mm, some whipped cream? Yes. How about this giant cucumber? Speedwax! 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 <laughs> Wait a minute. How giant? Rob and Joe Show. New episode Safe every word. single week. Okay. RobinJoeShow.com. Speedwax! For more information, <laughs> visit us at morebroadcasting.com. I love that. And uh, hey, maybe, you know, we might have those guys coming out to Vegas. I'd love that. Hope, so yeah. that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, welcome back to the Michael Mara Show. I, uh... I may have uh, indulged a little bit Friday night uh, to the point where Saturday was a little uh, logy for me. Sure. Had a lot of work to do, but uh, if I didn't have my liquid IV, I don't know what the hell I'd do. Liquid IV is the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. It's not just for somebody who might uh, go out a little too late the night before. No. It's for anybody that wants to hydrate. I love this stuff. Uh, now the hot weather is here, especially down here in southwest Florida. You'll be outside all the time. You need your liquid IV more than ever. Liquid IV hydrates you two to three times faster and more efficiently than water alone with an added bonus of vitamin C, B3, B5, B6, and B12. That's a lot of Bs. Straight mm. Bs, you're gonna, Mr. Spicoli. You're going to be hydrated, I tell you there what. There you go. Liquid IV, I want to tell you, Liquid IV is the fastest growing wellness brand. You can find it everywhere, even Costco. Liquid IV hydration multiplier is sold at all Costco's nationwide. Is that the alternative to traditional sugary? Let's stop, let's stop it down. Let's stop it down. We're losing you now with audio, Mike. Oh, God. Is Liquid IV is the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated, and I love it. Might have had a little uh, too much fun on Friday night. I was living on Liquid <laughs> IV on Saturday. Now that the hot weather is here, you'll be outside all the time. You need Liquid IV more than ever. Liquid IV hydrates you two to three times faster and more efficiently than water alone with an added bonus of, listen to all the B vitamins. You got your vitamin C. Right. But listen, you got your B3, your B5, your B6, your B12. That's a lot of Bs, straight Bs. Yeah, you're going to be feeling better with all that hydration. Liquid IV is the fastest growing wellness brand. You can find it everywhere, even Costco. Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier is sold at all Costco's nationwide. It's a healthy alternative to traditional sugary sports drinks because it has no artificial flavors or preservatives. It's non-GMO, vegan, free of gluten, dairy, and soy, and it can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. I love Liquid IV, and I know you will too. Right now, our listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use our code TMOS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on the Liquid IV website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter the promo code TMOS to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com, promo code TMOS. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. All right, so we talked about horse racing. Yes. And we talked about uh, golf not uh, as popular among uh, people as it has been as far as participation. Mm -hmm. I think the TV ratings are okay, especially for something like the Masters with Tiger. But uh, another sport that I've heard bad things about that, uh, you know, not, not as much traction is, uh, is boxing uh, yes. for, for a long time. Agreed, agreed. Si I mean, since the Mike Tyson era, we've had Floyd Mayweather well, and people like that. Well, unless it's a Mayweather or it's some one of these right. uh, prop fights that really don't make sense when you've got a UFC champion. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, like the, 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 the crazy stuff. But yes. let me tell you about a name. I looked in the other night. I just happened on it on Showtime's boxing, and there is this heavyweight champion WBC heavy, heavyweight champion of the world. The guy's name, if you haven't heard it, you're going to know it, Deontay uh, Wilder. And he is uh, fighting this other boxer named Brazil. I haven't seen a guy do what this guy did in the ring since the days of Mike Tyson. And I think this guy has enough charisma and enough personality, and he's a good-looking kid. I swear to you, I think this guy is going to be a superstar. And I... There's something to be said of any professional prize fight where somebody gets knocked out. Mm -hmm. But it's True. another th it's another thing to see when uh, – are we doing okay? We're looking are great. We okay? Yes, yes. Fine. Okay. It's another thing to see when a heavyweight has a one-punch knockout. And this guy, Deontay wow. Wilder, was, uh, was spectacular. And I think that because of – he's known as the Bronx Bomber. I think he's from the Bronx. Uh, he fought at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, and this guy, it was... Uh, I haven't had a prize fight. The problem is, the next morning, because Mrs. O'Meara was asleep while I was watching this, and when I woke her up, I said, Honey, I got a clip of this, and uh, I, I got a clip of this guy, Deontay Wow, with a one-punch knockout, and she's in the kitchen. She comes out, and she looks at me and goes, Excuse me, do you, do you really think that I want to watch your boxing highlight? <laughs> do you really think... I said, I, I said Honey... 
Honey, you got to look at this guy. His name's Deontay Wilder. Look, he's look at he's got that cool haircut, and he's he looks fabulous, and he's got this personality, and and he's just so excited. And they didn't, and and the guy Brazil didn't want to touch. She goes, "Stop, stop. Do you really think I'm interested in this?" <laughs> I said, "Well, I don't have anybody. You know, my father's dead, so <laughs> oh, I don't have go. anybody. What? I don't I don't have anybody to talk to. I'm not going to call Paul because he probably didn't watch it. I'm not going to call Rob. He didn't watch it. Oscar didn't watch it. I am frustrated. I want to share. I was so excited." This guy Brazil comes out and they don't and he doesn't want to touch gloves. He's a complete dick. Oh, he's he, a dick. He doesn't want to touch gloves. So Deontay Wilder is just like, oh, oh that's gonna huh, really make him mad. <laughs> and then he does the thing where it's like jab, 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 boom, lights the out. Knockout you know? is wow. impressive. Wow, uh, isn't that it's, impressive? It's impressive, but also it's it's the build up that you're like, this guy's not just gonna go down. Yeah. So he knocks him out and. And I agree with you, Mike. There is something we said about the style of which he knocks him out. Right. Because it's a buildup from the no touching of gloves, right. the disrespect, right. and then boom, bam, done. So a perfect the, little yeah. little vignette. It's a story. Yeah. yeah. Like Terry and Lannister said, we need a story. Right. Right. It's a story. We like our story. You think this is gentlemen. this is a, the second coming of boxing? I think there's a potential there. I think there really is. Where are we on running time right now? Because my clock didn't start. Oh, we're at 54 we? minutes. We should go about four oh. or five more minutes before oh, we break. Oh, God. All right. Is oh, this God. a teachable? Oh, God. Oh, no. It's what? okay. Is this a teachable moment where you could, I guess, too young for Michael to get into boxing? No, I don't want to watch uh, him. Either. Yeah. He's a, and by the way, uh, he had a play date uh, this weekend. And I've never seen him happier. Oh, that's uh, great. Not that we don't do that, but he goes to other kids' houses. And uh, we had this uh, wonderful little boy, Donnie, his buddy Donnie, and they're perfectly matched. And I've never seen my son that excited. I, I, you know, I wish it was something I could do for him. I thought when I built him the Lego pirate ship that it might be. Uh, no, this is this is in seventh tier level of excitement where he's up at six fifteen. And you know, Donnie's, going, coming bah, 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 Donnie. Donnie's coming over. And when Donnie came over, he ran out of the house, waited in the driveway for his friend Donnie. Aww. And then he says to me, as I'm putting him down to bed last night, he whispers him. I said, Dad, can I tell you what the best part of my day is? By the way, as a parent, yeah, that's what you want to hear from your child when you're putting them to bed. When he says, Dad, can I tell you what the best part of my day? I said, what? When Donnie pulled up in the car. And uh, he was excited to see me, and I was excited to see him. Aww, you know, we're social. If there's awesome. any, if there's any indication that we're social beings, uh, you know, it's also fantastic. his emotional IQ as a little boy is through the roof. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. And then, of course, when Dante, when Donnie leaves, not Dante, <laughs> that's the boxer. When Donnie <laughs> leaves. You know, he goes into pretty much hyper prick mode. You know, which yeah. is uh, you know the way it. Uh, well, it when kids like hang that, out with their own, it's it like the exorcist. It huh? emboldens them. They yeah. uh, all the, but I have a question. I mean, <laughs> I've gone through the whole play date thing for many years now. How right. is Donnie as a kid? Do you like Donnie? I love Donnie. That's He's great. So then. Sweet. That's perfect. They're nice to each other. There's a sweetness. And Donnie's mom came over, and she was a nice lady, and it was just, uh, it was cool. And this is kind of, you know, the the future now because they're going to be going to the same elementary school Good. together. And uh, you know, I'm all about that. Do you we know, know if they're the going right to be kids. in the same class for kindergarten? Uh, you know, uh, let me see. When last checked, Rob the. Uh, the elementary school he's attending, there are 430 kindergarten <laughs> classes. So roll them bones. Good yeah, luck. It's yeah. just like, you know, which one are you going to be in? You know, it's like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new kindergartner coming in to the 1,500 kids that are at the school. <laughs> By the way, did we mention that there are budget cuts now? There will be 300 kids per classroom. You know, and then you walk up to the kindergarten teacher and go, how did your first day go? I don't know, but I just want to. <laughs> I want to get home and have a Cosmo. I want to get home and have a Cosmo as soon as I possibly can. It's uh, it, it, it's great to see your child happy. Yes. And I enjoy Nothing I even better. Took him out. I even took him out to the driving range on, uh, on Saturday morning at 730. And uh, he'd swing and he'd hit the ball. And Daddy would say, that's a wonderful. <laughs> that's a wonderful shot, Michael. Yeah, you mentioned Daddy, they did, you'd Daddy, had a Friday. Uh, I'd had a Friday uh, following up the Saturday from the weekend before. Sure. Where, uh, once again, it's hiatus time. Oh, really? It's, it's hi Yeah, it's hiatus time. Mm. It's time to take a, you know, it's a, it's time to uh, put the sheets out on the line and let them dry. It's a, okay? bo a bodily courtesy, would, Mike, is what it, it is. is. It is a bodily, a I think. A it, reboot. It, it, exactly. It's, it's time for uh, me to, uh, you know, look down squarely in the eyes of my liver and say, it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be just fine. Everything's going to because it's a combination of factors. It's not just going out 
And, uh, you know, having just a certain portion of the evening where you may have been talking about politics and you're not quite sure who you may have insulted. Ah, I see. But it's the, uh, you know, it's not the question of looking in the, the, the garage and seeing the lights on your golf cart that you didn't turn off when you came in. Oh, it's, no. uh, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the idea of the next day the inhibitions are so removed from your body. You know, I was talking about Polly Christine's food yeah, uh, uh, that he enjoyed at the restaurant. Hey, eat away. You're eating some quality homemade restaurant food there that looks delicious. When uh, when my diet, based on the, uh, the evening that I had, would consist of Cheetos, <laughs> uh, Mickey Mouse ice cream bars, and a Little Caesars pizza. Which, uh, the worst which, by pizza. the way, which, by the way, seriously, put some mozzarella and some tomato sauce on the floor mat in the back seat of your car, put it in an oven, and then put it on a plate. That's a Little Caesars pizza. All right. For that's just money, my opinion. Not so bad, though. No, for the money and the convenience. And by the way, the charmer, the charmer, you know, uh, yeah, Leslie Jones, who works down at the uh, Little Caesars, <laughs> yes. who, who could not have been really. There's 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 unpleasant, and then there's have I I just walked through the door. Did I say something to piss you off? Because you're pissed at me for coming into your Little Caesars. Oh yeah, and then uh, and then chewing on it, and uh, you know, Little Caesars. Sometimes I think there are Seven Eleven pizzas that look at a Little Caesars pizza and go, <laughs> really? No, uh, I mean, I would take a frozen opinion. pizza. I would take a frozen pie over a Little Caesars pizza. I think I yeah, do not was, like uh, that product. Not fun. I, you know what? It's and cardboardy, they, uh, but uh, yeah, eh. it's cardboardy. It's paying for cardboard. <laughs> right? you, yeah. Oh, ye of uh, okay, Ina, chicken finger, <laughs> chicken finger, Ina Garten over here. You know, it's you know a the five good stuff. dollar pizza. Yeah. It is a five dollar pizza, and uh, he's I not pleased that. with the flavor profile, Mike. This is true. This is true. I ate more stuff too, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> my brain's much. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with the uh, news you may not need right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Distinguished listeners, friends, the three principals of TMOS, and hi, Carla. As we gather to celebrate the class of 2019, I'd like to pass along some advice as you make your way in the world. It's important to laugh. Please take time Dirk. to do that every day. There is an easy way to do that with a TMOS bonus package. It's an extra hour of hilarity delivered to your device every Friday, filled with ribald jokes and words like <laughs> and it's an education unto itself. <laughs> Simply put, it can help prepare you to put up with dip <laughs> co-workers and <laughs> supervisors as you start your career path. Do yourself a huge favor and get a bonus show subscription today. And parents, if your graduate can't afford it, gift them a subscription. Graduates, go out and carpe comodia. Thank you. Thank you. That's Dirk Vastrick. That was a Jim Amato written and produced Dirk Vastrick voiced promo. Collaboration. Dirk doesn't sound like he sounds on the phone. I think uh, the phone maybe he uses a little more bass. I don't know. I don't know but, what I, it was. but you're right. It, it should have been like this. Very interesting. Hi, Carlo. <laughs> That's the way I thought Dirk sounded. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Hey, ring doorbells, ring floodlight cams, yes. all the ring great products. Uh, I'm bringing my ring doorbell and a, a new security system up to Maine. I love it. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer by keeping you connected to your home from anywhere in the world. So if there's a package delivery or surprise visitor, you get an alert and you'll be able to see, hear, and speak to them. You know, little things like watching weather if you're in a different part yes. of the country and you might have some weather moving through and you want to check on your property, you can use Ring for that too. Do it all from your phone no matter where you are. Thanks to the HD video and two-way audio feature on Ring devices, you can even talk to the people at your door like, what are you doing? Uh, I have the Ring floodlight cam so I can keep track of Maine while I'm in Florida. I check it three times a day. It's the best. It's a motion-activated security camera with a built-in floodlight, siren alarm, and two-way audio, so you can see, hear, and speak to anyone on your property from anywhere. I'm in love with it. I love it. Pro tip, get the protection plan. I did that. All of your Ring video is saved forever, and that equals peace of mind if there's ever anything hanky. Hanky! As a TMOS listener, you have access to a special offer on a Ring doorbell starter kit. It's available right now. It has the video doorbell and the motion-activated floodlight cam. This starter kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. Just go to ring.com slash TMOS. That's ring.com slash TMOS, one of my favorite clients. Start living safer today, and we thank you. News! News! Ah! Boo! <laughs> you all right there, Rob? Yeah, just having fun. Okay, What's well, excited about the connection. That's a... Uh, well, oh, yeah. shush! Oh, no! All right, here we go. 
We'll make it. Robert F. Smith is the founder and CEO of the private equity firm Vista Equity Partners. Last year, Forbes ranked him as the 163rd richest person in America, worth about $4.4 billion. Wow. He is uh, one of only 13 black billionaires in the world. This year, his fortune is up to $5 billion. A few months ago, he donated $1.5 million to Morehouse College in Atlanta, which is a historically black school. Then yesterday, they gave him an honorary doctorate and... He spoke at the commencement in front of about 400 graduating seniors. During his speech, he announced he was making another donation to pay off the entire graduating class's student loans. The crowd went nuts. I watched the video. He announced it. It took a second for it to land on the students what he was really doing. It was almost like they thought they'd heard him wrong because it's a massive amount of money. According to one estimate, it'll wipe out roughly $40 million of student debt. Wow. And Morehouse College says it's the largest single donation the school has ever been associated with. Spectacular. Good for I think him. He said he wanted he wants to put a little fuel in your bus to get started. That's it would what he be. Said. Gr- I wonder if he would speak at VCU in about four years. <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Right. We'll give and him Mary a doctorate. <laughs> yeah, we, no donation made by the uh, communications director for the National Gallery of Art. Really? Uh, uh, sorry about that. She was fine. Uh, maximum security <laughs> owner. A story to tell. <laughs> Gary West. Gary West wants a rematch or something close to it. He just threw down the gauntlet for four other derby contenders to the tune of 20 mil. He said if any of them beat maximum security in any race by the end of the year, he's willing to fork over $5 million, and they don't even have to win the race. They just have to finish ahead of maximum security. This wow. guy's pissed. Uh, but if any of their owners take the bet and lose, he wants them to pay him $5 million, which he'd then donate to charity. It's not clear if any of the other owners like their chances enough to take him up on it, but the four horses he's challenging are Country House. Yeah. That's the winner of the Kentucky Derby after Maximum Security got DQ'd. Long Range Toddy, War of Will. Yeah, that's who won the Preakness. And uh, the uh, Rider. Horses from Kentucky at the start of the Preakness. Uh, he probably chose those four. Country House was the new winner. The one Maximum Security was found with... Uh, won the Kentucky Derby after Maximum Security got DQ'd. Long Range Toddy, War of Will, who just won the Preakness, and Bodie Express, the one that threw the rider. Uh, he probably chose those four because Country House was the new winner, and the other three of the ones Maximum Security was found to have interfered with. Uh, it, it's interesting. We'll see what happens. I don't think it is. He sounds not only one. like he was mad, but also he probably came up with the plan when he was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> As we mentioned, had it on the show, Real Life Grumpy Cat passed away last Tuesday. Grumpy Cat's owner, Tab. Tabitha, of course that's her name. She made the announcement on Friday saying that Grumpy Cat encountered complications from a recent urinary tract infection <clears throat> that unfortunately became too tough for her to overcome. She was seven, which in cat years is, I'm not sure. According to Purina.com, the first two years of a cat's life are roughly, roughly equal to the first 25 of a human's. And after that, each additional year is around four cat years. So Grumpy Cat was maybe around 45. About right. 45. By that math, yeah. Tabitha's statement also said, quote, Grumpy Cat has helped millions of people smile all around the world, even when times were tough. Her spirit was uh, continued to uh, live uh, through her fans everywhere. Uh, Her spirit will continue, whatever. Uh, There is a real reason why Grumpy Cat was so grumpy. She had a form of feline dwarfism. Oh, like a little cat. (laughs) And that, along with an underbite, gave her the perpetual frown that made her a sensation. I'm just so glad that people aren't making too much of a big deal of the passing of this cat. It's very sad. It is very (laughs) sad. And Mike, you told me on Friday his name, or her name, Tartar Sauce. Tartar Sauce the Cat. Yes. Yeah. Tabitha the owner, Tartar Sauce the Cat, yeah. Grumpy Cat the name. We wish them well. <laughs> America. Uh, a new study out of James Cook University in Australia found there are three exercises men can do that will improve their performance in bed. I guess down there, you're playing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. uh, tighten up the muscles that hold your butt, like when you're trying to stop gas. Hold for 10 seconds, relax, repeat. Uh, number two, this is a weird one, testes retraction. Use your muscle to try to draw your testes up towards your body. Isn't that the same as fake flatulence? It, they seem to be the same muscles. Uh, Mike, there. as a show, I think we should issue a testes retraction today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, number three is pee stoppage. Ooh. Try to try to stop your flow midstream while you're peeing. All right, I'll do that. But only Let's in a crowded happens. stadium. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Here's the preakness. You. Be respectful. Thank you. Yes, Thank please. Thank you very, very much. Uh, flying isn't exactly a pleasant experience at this point. The flights cost more than ever, and the service is worse than ever. According to a new survey, flying is now our least favorite way to travel, and the average person would rather drive anywhere within six and a half hours to avoid getting on a plane. Wow. Mm, damn. The survey also found uh, that the majority of people are planning to do more road trips in the next five years than they did in the past five. So there we I have it. I hate driving. I don't oh, mind yeah. it so much if it's not if it's not a long drive. And besides, when you get there, you have your car. You don't have to rent a car. You don't have to fool with parking at the airport. Uh, There's a lot yeah. of that that you deal with. Yep, that's why I drive to Maine. No, I'm not doing that again this year. <laughs> no, not going to happen. And now a little something, something. The security system at a bar in Lincoln City, Oregon called the Beach Club, picked up uh, some activity around 3 a.m. on Thursday. You getting me? You yes, hearing yeah, me? Yeah, we okay. perfectly. Rob, look at me. I don't know what you keep looking at, but you're driving me out of my fucking mind. Okay, I'm Thank sorry you very about much. that. Uh, when they got, is there somebody out there on the other side of the glass? I have no I'm idea. I'm curious. looking at you. Okay, thank you. Uh, when they got there, they found uh, at the bar, they found a 31-year-old guy named Jason McIntyre inside. Apparently, he'd been in the bar drinking that night and uh, is, was shutting down. He managed to hide until the employees closed up and left. <laughs> Once he had the place to himself, he got back to drinking. He was arrested for burglary and theft. Mm. And I just want to say to him personally, I understand you. <laughs> I really, really understand you. I truly do. These are my people. Yeah. I never want that party to end. Can you tell I had a Friday night? Can you tell that? Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with the audio vault. Rob Spiewak, and we can see each other right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. This week on The Real Interns of Podcast Village. It's me, Dahlia. People seem to bask in the fact that I'm the bitch turn. But the real gem of this office is Johnny the Dim Turn. I saw him try to tie his Velcro shoes. And then he asked me if people listened to the recordings that we make. When I said yes, people listen to TMOS. He then asked if people listen to the recordings that he makes on his voice memos app. As I said, Dim Turn. Follow the interns at MikeOmeraShow.com. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. As Casey Kasem used to say, as the numbers get smaller, the hits get bigger. But as the number of TMOS live tickets we sell gets bigger, the chances of you seeing the show get smaller. Holy crap! You gotta <laughs> act and act now! Uh, you do not want to miss the TMOS live 10th anniversary party. First one sold out. Saturday we got tickets left. This year is going to be unbelievable because we've added a second show on November 16th. So if you missed out on the first sold out show, now's your chance. And if you want to see both shows even better, the TMOS 10th anniversary party. So big, we need two nights to do it. Two entirely different shows, two different nights at the Zappos corporate headquarters in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are on sale now at MikeOmeraShow.com. So keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for our website. And as Casey Kasian would say if he were here... Let me out of this box. <laughs> Get a shovel. The TMOS 10th anniversary party brought to you by Zappos. You got me. Uh, let's open up the audio vault. Uh, everything all right? Everything's keep great. Asking about Aces, great. daddy-o. All right. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Very except good. for the Vegas music. Sorry yeah, about that. Right. Thank you. All right. Good, good, good. Now, audio vault. You mentioned it in the pregame, I believe, but I have the tape. Did you see Arnold get his flying sidekick over the weekend? No. Unbelievable. I Oscar. couldn't he got believe it. in the middle of the back. It was yeah. amazing, Rob. We have this video up at the uh, Mike O'Mara Show Looking. Facebook page. He was in South Africa. It looked like some sort of health workout summit or something. Right. And he was being very cool, Arnold, on the side. And you can almost hear him talking and taking the selfies. And a guy runs up behind him and does, they called it in the piece, how do they call it? A flying drop kick. Yeah, where he horrible. Came, Could really it. hurt him. It really did. Now he says he his response was he thought he had just been jostled by the crowd. I yeah, don't he thought he'd been bumped by the car. But right. I don't believe that because it, he hit him hard enough to knock him down. Here's the audio of it. <laughs> Why would he do that? And then the guy starts screaming. <laughs> Help me, I need a Lamborghini, the guy is saying. Very, very odd. But oh anyway, it was just weird. And also, it, it throws me because I forget Arnold looks older now. 
So yeah. it's a little bit of that pewter cup thing. You don't want to see an old person fall down. By the way, uh, you uh, PGA Championship over the weekend. Way to go. Stay classy, New York. You know, just just <laughs> really nice job. Uh, what just happened? Screaming, screaming like before the guy finished his back swings. Oh. You know, uh, when, when, they, when they go outside of the ropes and, uh, with an errant shot, it's just it was like. Hey. <laughs> you know, they're not that far away. They should have gone to the Brickness. Yeah, New York. <laughs> now, Jack Black seems to sometimes just duck his head in at the right times. Over the weekend on his Instagram feed, he released his recording of the theme of Game of Thrones. So great. I know. And I love the fact that you know what? That takes talent. He really is a talented singer to be able to yeah, do he can that. Sing. Yeah. He's funny. Yeah. I love that. But I also, Mike, as a throwback, I knew that if I played that, you'd want to hear this. Stone Phillips more than meets the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Which he actually you know, sang to Stone Phillips. You know what it is? It's it's you know there's so many DJs that do those horrible hack parody songs. Yeah, and and he just does it in a in a way that's so over the top jive that it makes it funny. I think you know? he goes so far that it almost it reinstalls sincerity to it somehow. <laughs> that's a hard right. thing to say. You know, but, weird, I know. Uh, I know right. what you're talking about. So it's you're in Canada. It's summer. There's no snow on the ground. What do you do? You what? say, I'm going to take my snowmobile and try to drive it over the top of a swimming pool. Do oh. I have that much speed oh, that I can do? Oh, no. The thing is, I'll play you the tape, and this is also on our Facebook page. He makes it across the pool. It's when he hits the concrete on the other side of the pool that he flips. But my favorite part is not that. It's the joyous reaction of his friend who was watching him. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, crushed you good, eh? <laughs> Did it ever hit you good? Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it hurts. Oh, oh man, full tunnel right on top yeah. of you. Oh, <laughs> it's quiet, but if you want to replay that, what the guy says is, yeah, it hurts, eh? Yeah, it hurts, <laughs> eh? Real bad. Yeah. <laughs> or beer, eh? But yeah. that's not yeah, so yeah, bad because yeah. just his friend saw him flip the snowmobile. That's not as bad as the graduate student that was going to do a backflip on stage. Oh. Did not do it. Landed oh, on no. his face. I just like oh, the no. reaction of the crowd. Way to go. Way to go, Slick. You had here's, to make it a little more about you. Here's the deal. Go up, get your piece of paper, and get walked the hell out. off the stage. That's it. Thank no you. flips. Yeah. No yeah. flips. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, <laughs> it's going to sound like this. <laughs> Idiot. Could you imagine? God. <laughs> that reaction was great. I love that. So there's a dog walking app. It's called a uh, WAG. Yeah, I've used it. You've used it, yeah. Yes. And that's great if you're out of town, you want to have someone come in and take care of your dogs. But also, you know, some people love their dogs so much they have doggy cams that sure. they can observe their dog. When these pieces of technology collide is when you realize that the dog walker you've hired has brought her boyfriend over to your house to have sex naked on your couch and you're observed on the dog watching app. Ew! So, Saw the video. Beware yeah. of this, yes. On the preview of the alert, it showed a man in our house, someone that I wasn't expecting, so I opened it up, and that's when I saw that she was there with a man in our house, and they were going straight for our bedroom. She believes that you were having sex in both of the bedrooms. I, oh, it's okay that she believes that that's not what was going on. Oh, liar. Don't bring a dude to the house, biatch. It got hot, and uh, as I said, oh, I don't shit. like wearing clothes. <laughs> And I feel terrible <laughs> about it. It was not something I did with intent or ma with malice. It's not anything I did with intent. Yeah, or malice. Or malice, you just, no. You just did what you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to walk their dogs and leave. Well, it's hot, so you want to get Ass. naked and, and go to their are bedroom. you on the clock during that time? Because WAG charges you by the walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's nasty. And she was nasty. She and wasn't on the clock. <laughs> um, Mike, you're handling it rather well. Yes. The uh, big announcement that we got last night that I know it's hurt me, it's hurt Oscar. Steve Croft is leaving 60 Minutes. After 50 years in journalism, 40 years at CBS News, and 30 years at 60 Minutes, I've decided to retire. 
What throws me about that is that he, to me, is still a new guy on 60 Minutes. <laughs> he has the most he's, tenure he's, there. He's the yeah. longest standing anchor in 30 years. It's been right. a difficult decision, one that I've considered at the end of each of the past four seasons. Now feels like the right time. There are still some things I'd like to do that I haven't done. I'm not getting any younger. I want to leave while I still have all of my marbles, the energy to enjoy life, and the curiosity to pursue some different things. Anyway, so I wish him well. I like Amen. that show hey, still. I watch it every week. Safe travels, Steve Croft. Way but, to go. But you're holding on. And now I this reporting. that means mm-hmm. that Scott Pelley moves up as Mr. Excitement one more notch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. All right. All. Um, on the <laughs> Sunday Today Show, Willie Geist had a pretty good score. Obviously, David Letterman is really... Uh, really, really pressing the second season of his interview show because Letterman doesn't do the Today Show, but Letterman right. did the Today Show. And What's our running time right now, by the way? We are just, this is the last tape. We're at 118, roughly. Okay, so, just checking. Okay. Um, right, and so checking. Willie Geist asked him a question that's on everybody's mind, and Letterman was ready for him. So tell me more about the beard. Well, you tell me about your toupee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been waiting you went to use right that to line. it. I've been waiting to use that line for four years. Uh, I wish I had a story. It started out I was just tired of shaving, uh, and then now I'm I'm afraid to see what's under there. So you know, there it is. That's it. That's pretty much it. Not yeah. a statement. Not a protest. No. Nope, nope. Initially, it was just pure. I'm tired of shaving. I wake up and I forget that I have it. Honestly. Nice. The thing after watching the entire interview, Dave, for the first time in his life, seems happy. It's so good right. to see him look happy. So that's nice. All that's online if you want to check that out because I know you didn't watch the Willie Guys show on Sunday morning. That cool. is your Magic Audio <laughs> Vault. Have a great Monday, everybody. Very, very cool. Another one in the can. Thanks for joining us for another riveting episode of the Mike O'Mara Show. If you have a message you'd like to hear in our Tuesday mailbag, send it to Rob with two Bs at MikeOmeraShow.com. Our Yak Shack always open, 888-920-MORE. That's 888-920-MORE. 6673 888-920-6673 and uh, get your tickets to our second live show still tickets available for that they are going fast for Oscar Santana and Rob Spiewak Mike O'Mara thanking you for your best support uh, your continued amazing support for the best part of your day the Mike O'Mara show bye bye everybody so long ciao ciao before you go please make a mental note today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages you can secure yours right now by going to mikeomereshow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner buy it or give it either way you're helping out TMOS and that's a good thing thank you and go in peace Mike O'Mara radio entertainment this is Natalia she's my sister She is number four prostitute in all of Kazakhstan. Nice. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. All I ask is a tall ship and a star to sailor by. Good night.